There's no one unwelcome here So that sin and shame that you brought with you You can leave it at the door Good evening, everyone. Hi, I'm Rodney. It's good to be with you on this Wednesday evening where we gather to celebrate the transfiguration of our Lord Jesus Christ and the transfiguration of our very selves in the presence of God this evening. Thank you for saying yes to God's invitation to come together as His body in the world tonight. For those of you who are joining us on our recorded service Welcome. Thanks for joining us here at St. Paul Lutheran in Anamosa. We, uh, we gather, as always, in the good energy. As we, as we wrap up this epiphany season, we notice and, and give thanks for all of the ways that God has been revealed to us since Christmas, all the ways we've noticed how God is active in our lives, even in the midst of our turmoils and our doubts and our struggles and our illnesses, we know that God is with us, and so we gather to celebrate that tonight in particular. Just wanted to remind you that a letter was sent out to all of your households this week, so you can take a look at that. It has some uh, pertinent information in there about the season of Lent, which begins next Wednesday with Ash Wednesday, and uh, we will have services at noon and 6 p.m., and uh, we invite you to come and join us as we begin that penitential season of Lent, a time of fasting and charity and prayer. And so uh, take a look at the letter. Consider how it is that God is calling you into a deeper relationship in the, at this time in the year. And as we come together here at St. Paul, we lift each other up walking that journey together. 
strengthened in Christ's presence and gifts of spirit. And so take a deep breath. Just allow yourself to be here at this time. Just let any busyness or stresses of the day, let them be carried away. Let them be carried away on your breath. Ruah, breath of God, Holy Spirit. Animating us, filling us with life. We're so very pleased to have our third and fourth graders here tonight with us to worship with us. And they'll be celebrating afterwards with a little treat of ice cream because of all of their efforts to be engaged in acts of kindness over this uh, month, along with all of the young people that have been coming to WD4. Acts of kindness, charity, thinking of others first modeling for us what it is that Christ calls us to in our lives. And so, thanks for being here with us tonight, you guys. Let's stand together. Let that energy of God flow through us as Laura comes front and then leads us in our opening song. We open today with Today is the Day. We're going to try another key, just a second.
day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are called to do that every single day as we wake up in the morning to rejoice and be glad for we have another day of breath and life that God has given us so that we can go out into the world to be God's hands and feet. And everything in our lives that we do, we give glory to God. And so I wonder how many of you this morning woke up in this morning and said, God, be the glory. Rejoice that I am alive today and I can live my life according to what you teach me to do. Or did we wake up this morning and grumble because it was freezing cold outside and we had to go to work or we had to go to school? Was it more like that? Or was it jumping out of bed and saying, thank you, God, that I am alive and breathing? And I can live today doing what you call me to do, to be kind to others, to love everyone, whether they are a friend or an enemy, to find places in the world and in our day to day where we can teach others about God's love. And we come here tonight and we reflect on our day. And you know what? We've all fallen short because we are a broken people and we want what we want when we want it. And so we come here tonight as we reflect on today, as we reflect on the week, as we reflect on our month and say, God, we are sorry for our grumbling, for our frustrations, for not trusting in you, for not being kind to others. We confess our sins. So in this moment of silence, to think about the places in your life that you would want to lay at the foot of God and say, God, these are the things where I fell short and I am sorry. And what we know is that it's not just us who have fallen short, but each and every one of us in this place and all around. And so together we confess and we say the words on the screen. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves we have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done, the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. My friends, receive this good news. Your sins have been forgiven through Jesus Christ. Live your lives as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. As pastor just said, he said, receive this good news. And our next song is called the gospel. And what the gospel stands for is good news. It is the good news of our forgiveness that we have. It's the good news that God separates our sins so far as the east is from the west and he wipes the slate clean. It is the good news that God loves each and every one of us. It is the good news that God has set us free. It is the good news that we are children of God. Let's sing about it. We're turning over every stone Hoping to find salvation In a world that's left us cold Can we get back to the altar Back to the arms of our first love There's only one way to the Father And He's calling out to us To the captive it looks like freedom To the orphan it feels like home To the skeptic it might sound crazy To believe in a world where our hearts are breaking And we're lost in the mess we've made Like a blinded light in the dead of night It's the gospel, the gospel that makes a way It's the gospel that makes a way It's the cure for our 
the gospel is not that we can receive Jesus into our lives, but that he's already received us into his. In my own life, it means forgiveness when I know I deserve the fall. It called me out of my darkness, it carried me to the cross. In a moment, my eyes were opened, in that moment, my heart was changed like a blinded pray with me. Lord Jesus, we come here tonight to hear the good news, the good news of the gospel, to hear of your forgiveness and your love for each and every one of us. Help us to not be lost in the mess of our own lives, but instead to open our hearts and our minds and our ears to return back to you, to return back to your arms, to return back to your love and to return back to your grace as our lives are transformed as we hear of your love for each and every one of us tonight. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to please be seated as I invite our reader to come forward to read God's word to us. Good evening. Our first reading this evening is from Exodus chapter 34. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai carrying the two tablets of the testimony, he didn't know that the skin of his face glowed because he had been speaking to God. Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, <clears throat> saw his radiant face, and held back, afraid to get close to him. Moses called out to them, Aaron and the leaders, in the community came back and Moses talked with them. Later all the Israelites came up to him and he passed on the commands, everything that God had told him on Mount Sinai. When Moses finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. But we, he, when he went in to the presence of God to speak with him, he removed the veil until he came out. When he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, they would see Moses' face, its skin glowing. And then he would again put the veil on his face until he went back to speak with God again. Word of God, word of life. God. We'll now read together Psalm 99. God rules on your toes, everybody. He rules from his angel throne. Take notice. God looms majestic in Zion. He towers in splendor over all the big names. Great and terrible your beauty. Let everyone praise you. Holy, yes, holy. Strong king, lover of justice. You laid things out fair and square. You set down the foundations in Jacob, foundation stones of just and right ways. Honor God, our God. Worship his rule, holy. Yes, holy. Moses and Aaron were the priests. 
Samuel among those who prayed to him. They prayed to God, and he answered them. He spoke from the cloud, pillar of cloud, and they did what he said. They kept the law he gave them, and then God, our God, answered them. But you were never soft on their sins. Lift high, our God. Worship at his holy mountain. Holy, yes, holy is God, our God. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Christian community in Corinth, Greece, from the third chapter. With that kind of hope to excite us, nothing holds us back. Unlike Moses, we have nothing to hide. Everything is out in the open with us. He wore a veil so the children of Israel wouldn't notice that the glory of God was fading away, and they didn't notice. They didn't notice it then, and they don't notice it now. Don't notice that there's nothing left behind that veil. Even today, when the proclamation of that old bankrupt government are read out, they don't see through it. Only Christ can get rid of the veil so that they can see for themselves that there's nothing there. Whenever, though, they turn to face God, as Moses did, God removes the veil, and there they are, face to face. They suddenly recognize that God is a living, personal presence, not a piece of chiseled stone. And when God is personally present, a living spirit, that old, constricting legislation is recognized as obsolete. We're free of it. All of it, all of us, nothing between us and God, our faces shining with the brightness of his faith. And so we are transfigured, much like the Messiah, our lives gradually becoming brighter and more beautiful as God enters our lives and we become like him. Since God has so generously let us in on what he's doing, we're not about to throw up our hands and walk off the job just because we run into occasional hard times. We refuse to wear masks and play games. We don't maneuver and manipulate behind the scenes. And we don't twist God's word to suit ourselves. Rather, we keep everything we do and say out in the open, the whole truth on display, so that those who want to can see and judge for themselves in the presence of God. Word of God, word of life. Thank you, Paula. The Lord be with you. I invite you to rise for the proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter. About eight days later, Jesus climbed the mountain to pray, taking Peter, John, and James along. While Jesus was in prayer, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became blinding white. At once, two men were there talking with him. He turned out to be Moses and Elijah. And what a glorious appearance they made. They talked over Jesus' exodus, the one he was about to complete in Jerusalem. Meanwhile, Peter and those with him were slumped over in sleep. When they came to, rubbing their eyes, they saw Jesus in his glory and the two men standing with him. When Moses and Elijah had left, Peter said to Jesus, Master, this is a great moment. Let's build three memorials, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. He blurted this out without thinking. And while Peter was still babbling on about this, a light, radiant cloud enveloped them all. As they found themselves buried in the cloud, they became deeply aware of God. And then there was this voice I came out of the cloud. This is my son, the chosen. Listen to him. 
And when the sound of the voice died away, they saw Jesus there alone. They were speechless. And they continued speechless, said not one thing to anyone during those days they had seen. But when they came down off the mountain the next day, a big crowd was there to meet them. A man called out from the crowd, Please, please, teacher, take a look at my son. He's my only child. Often, a spirit seizes him. Suddenly, he's screaming, thrown into convulsions, his mouth foaming, and then it beats him black and blue before it leaves. I asked your disciples to deliver him, but they couldn't. Jesus said, what a generation. No sense of God. No focus to your lives. How many times do I have to go over these things with you? How much longer do I have to put up with this? Bring your son to me. And while he was coming to Jesus, the demon slammed the boy to the ground and threw him into convulsions. Jesus stepped in. He ordered the foul spirit gone healed the boy, and handed him back to his father. They all shook their heads in wonder, astonished at God's greatness, God's majestic greatness. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. So let me ask you guys something. Third and fourth graders, look at me for a second, okay? I know you were probably given some kind of a writing assignment, right? Like, it's really important what I'm going to say, and so you have to record it, right? Take notes. Tell your teachers afterwards. You have to go home and tell your parents, right, afterwards? You don't have to? Why? You're special privileged, aren't you? Because you live with really awesome parents. Right? Yeah, your mom. Not your dad so much, but your mom, certainly. Kylie. Let me ask you guys. You're looking at me. Does your face ever glow? No. It doesn't? Do you know for sure? Yes. Does your face ever glow? Faith is not a flashlight. (laughs) That's true. You are right. If I asked your parents, though, do you think they would say that they've seen your faces glow? I bet they would. Why? Because your parents love you. That's right. We see things in other people when we love them, don't we? So why did I ask you about this? How do you get your face to glow? Some of us in the the congregation have to wash with oil of Olay every night if we want our faces to glow. But yeah, (laughs) yay, Betty. Yeah. You could hold a flashlight on your face. That's a different kind. That's like a glow that reflects, though, right? In this first reading, did you hear this part, though, where Moses comes down off of the mountain? I just walked up the mountain. Moses just came down off the mountain to the people. And it says that the people saw his face glowing. Why was Moses' face glowing? Who had he encountered up on the mountain? Do you remember? Who did he talk with? It's not Jesus, because Jesus didn't come yet. Who was Moses talking with? Whoever he was talking with gave him two tablets of commandments. Do you remember who that was? It's not a trick question. It's God, you're right? Yeah, Moses was talking with God. Because God gave Moses the commandments. The commandments not to oppress us, but the commandments that were given out of love. 
And Moses had this encounter with God who is love. And the people in his day, though, were scared because they thought that if you saw God face to face, you would die. But instead, here's Moses standing in their midst, having talked with God, brings them God's loving commandments, and he's very much alive. His face is glowing because the love of God is radiating out of him. And he says to the people, God doesn't want to punish you. God doesn't want to see you condemned or to see you die here in the desert. God wants you to have life. God wants you to be joy-filled, to have abundance. And so God gives you these commands to live by, the commands of love. Sometimes we have a really hard time believing That God is with us. Isn't it shocking to you if I say to you, God is in your heart? That's not very shocking to us. Why? Because we grow up hearing that, don't we? That God is in us. God's around us. God's with us. But you know what? That was really shocking for the time of Moses. And it was even shocking for the people at the time of Jesus. Because they often had an image of God that God was completely other. And that they had to live these commandments to appease God so God wouldn't punish them. And they were constantly striving, living the law, to try to get God to be pleased with them. God was out there. And so we have this story tonight of Jesus climbing up the mountain with Peter and James and John. Because Jesus has been trying to say to the people, God isn't out there. God's not a future reality. The kingdom of God that you're talking about experiencing is not some future reality. It's now. And how do I know that? Because when I pray, I hear it directly from God. I feel God's love. And they're like, Jesus, we don't understand That's not what we've been taught. And so he takes them up the mountain. And when they're on the top of the mountain, we hear them, they drift off into sleep. And Jesus starts to pray. And what happens to Jesus when he's praying with God? Something happens to him. Anybody notice? Something happens. He gets really tall, right? He grows six feet. No, that's not it. What happens? His face glows. Somebody got it. His face glows. And his, and his clothes start to dazzle bright white. And you know what that is? That's the love of God shining through him. The Shekinah of God, the glory of God was shining through Jesus. That's how much Jesus knew God loved him. And Jesus says to them, look, God is here with me. I'm praying with God. This is me communing with God. And then Peter and James and John wake up. And they come and they stand with Jesus. And this cloud descends around them. And they're with Jesus. They're in the midst of God's presence. And there is this tremendous glow. And it says they became very aware of God's love. Their whole lives were changed because of that. Everything they had been taught, all of the history, all the tradition was being changed as they came to understand in the totality of their beings, in their very hearts, in their faces, that God loved them now. And that they were being called to be love in the world. And they had to go and practice. And they were looking around, they're like, well, how do we do this, Jesus? And a voice comes out of this cloud. And what does the voice tell them? This is my beloved son, my chosen one. What does it tell them to do? Listen, just like you're doing now. Don't worry, we'll get the ball in a little bit, okay? Right now we're listening. 
We're listening to the voice of Jesus, and we're watching. And see, this is what's cool about his disciples. They got to walk with Jesus and listen to him teach, and they got to hear what he said, and they got to learn firsthand what this love of God looked like. And so they come down off the mountain, we hear the next day, and they're walking through the crowd, and Jesus shows them what this love of God is, his face Glowing with the presence of God. He walks through the crowd and a, and a, a guy shouts out, Jesus, teacher, teacher, come and see my son, my only son, my son who will carry on my legacy, my son who is the apple of my eye, the one that I have, that I've been called to raise up. He is cursed. He's filled with a demon. Can, put yourself in this boy's place for a minute. This, this young boy, your age, his whole life, what has he known? He, he's out of control. He, he convulses. He falls on the ground and he shakes. His muscles get rigid and he, his eyes roll back. He loses consciousness. But it's not only that. It's what the people say about him. You're cursed. You're filled with a demon. You sinned. You've made God mad. Or maybe your parents did. Somebody made God mad. And look what's happening to you. You are suffering because of your curse, your sin. And this young boy, can you imagine that? Never hearing that he's good enough. Never hearing that it's okay, that he's, that he's only a sick kid that he needs to be avoided he needs to be excluded he's never heard that he's loved that he's chosen that he's enough and Jesus walks in the situation and the dad says come come see my boy and Jesus walks walks up and what is what does he hear from this from the dad your disciples couldn't deliver him and Jesus, surprisingly, gets angry with his disciples. He says, why don't you get it yet? How long am I going to have to teach you about who God is and what God is doing? Why? Why couldn't they deliver the boy from his demon? Because they did the exact same thing that everybody who had come before them had done. Where's the sin? Are you not living the law well enough? What's the offering that you took to the temple last year? Do you say your daily prayers? Certainly somebody sinned. And they spent all their time judging and labeling and enforcing all, everything that this young boy has heard his whole life. Everything the father has heard since the boy was chosen, the, the boy was a bane to the father instead of his great joy, his pride. And Jesus sees this and he says, Ah, oh, you people, no sense of God. What? No sense of love. All you can see is the law. All you can see is what's broken. All you can see is how to exclude and to separate. Don't you understand God is about life and about love? And Jesus steps in, names the evil spirit, judgment, curse, separation, lack of love. He names the spirit away with you. And he takes the boy you can imagine him, his face glowing, saying to the boy, you are not cursed. You are not a product of sin. You are not destined for separation and exclusion and isolation and loneliness. You are not displeasing to God who created you and gives you life. Return to your home. Father, take him, love him, raise him up as best you can to be the child of God that he is. And the boy was healed. 
Not keyword. Healed. Why? Because relationship. The power of the relationship with God is what healed him. In Matthew, we hear Jesus say, the only way that you can deal with this is through prayer. It's absolutely true, and Jesus modeled this on the mountain. The power of prayer is not rendering something outrageous or extraordinary over people. No, it's about knowing God's will because we talk with God. We spend time with God. We know God and God's will. That's what prayer is, and there's power in that. And the power that comes through prayer is love, the ability to love and to heal. And as Jesus called us last week, to pray for our enemies. The only way we can have the power to pray for our enemies is to pray with God, to know God and God's will. You, my friends, young and old, you have the power to pray, to know God's love, to be God's love. You have the power to glow, to glow with the love of God.
invite you to please stand as you are able. As we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We are formed by God's word to be Christ's body in the world. We are called to pray, to bring the love of God to the world, to each other, to ourselves, and for ourselves. And so I invite you to think about your own lives, those people and those situations that you would like to join to the prayers of the church at this time. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Transform us by your greatness, O God. Send us down the mountain to share joy with all people. Make us agents of change, confident that your hope will vanquish despair and your goodness will conquer evil. God of grace, hear our prayer. The mountains and the va valleys sing your praise. <clears throat> Dazzle us with your presence in every landscape. Bluffs built by ancient glaciers, <clears throat> canyons carved by, by flowing rivers, flat horizons with uninterrupted views, and sands shaped by ocean tides. God of grace, hear our prayer. You love justice and establish equity. Strengthen leaders of local governments community nonprofits, and grassroots com campaigns. Bless them with gifts of integrity, creativity, and sound conscience. Build up safe and joyful communities where all people may thrive. God of grace, Hear our heal those who are in distress, especially Ed Allaire, Bob Cropful, Dan Lambertson, Sean and Valerie Lambertson family, Natalie Vasky, niece of Barb Kleiss, and Hank Berry. Give patience to those waiting for answers. Grant hope to those who have reached the limits of treatment. Give compassion, passionate hearts to those who accompany loved ones through illness and uncertainty. God of grace, hear our prayer. Today we shout Alleluia from the mountaintop. This week we enter the wilderness of Lent. Bless all who prepare and lead us in worship during this change of season. Pastors, deacons, musicians, and all who contribute to our worship life. God of grace, hear our prayer. Blessed are those who listen to God's voice in this life and now rest with him. Transform us from glory into glory and give us your presence that we do not lose heart. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share with those around you a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Not only do we share peace, the peace of Christ with each other, but we share also with each other and with this world some of our treasures, some of our talents, some of our time.
those gifts that are abundantly given to us by our God, we recognize them and return some of that as an act of worship to our God for blessing, for blessing to the world. And so let us as a prayer of offering join our voices in saying together, Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ our light. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He revealed his glory to the disciples to strengthen them for the scandal of the cross. His glory shone from a body like our own to show that the church, which is the body of Christ, would one day share his glory. In our unending joy, we echo on earth the song of the angels in heaven as they praise your glory forever. So now in the power of Holy Spirit, let us remember Christ in this sacramental meal as we sing, Remember Now, My Children. pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My friends, come to God's table. There is a place for you and there is enough for all.
Let us pray together. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So I have a secret I want to share with you. You were all glowing when you were receiving communion, whether you knew. I know some of you wanted to say I was under my mask, but probably, yeah. Um, I also want to just take a moment. Um, uh, Pastor Steve and Kathy are going to be traveling away from us. Um, we won't see you for a, a little while through a lot of the season of Lent. And so just want to uh, pray a prayer of blessing over you and Kathy in your travels, Steve, that you will be renewed and filled with great love, and that as you climb some of those mountains, that you will feel the presence of God surrounding you in a powerful way and know of our love over the miles for you. Amen. The Lord be with you. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, fill you with trust, hope, and love now and forever. Amen. We send you out to testify to that love. you out and we say together through the, through the power, power of, of the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit we, we go, go into, into the world, world to trust steadily in God, God hope unswervingly and love extravagantly thanks be to God. God and all God's people said Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful week and we'll see you next time.